Hi, this is Todd Baginski. I'm a Microsoft MVP and the partner and CTO at Canvas Consulting. In this video, I'm going to take you on a Power Apps deep dive, and I'm going to use the Leave Request Power Apps sample template as my example template to do so to show you how to use Excel as the data source for Power Apps. I'd like to start with explaining how Excel is used in the Leave Request Power Apps sample template. I think that'll give you a good idea to really see where Excel is being used and different ways that the data is going in and out of Excel in a Power App. And then we can dive into some of the other concepts around using Excel within a Power App. So the Excel file is used in three main places inside of Leave Request. First, it's used to store the company holidays and display them. And that's just a read-only operation. Then it's also used to allow people to enter in requests for leave and to drive the submission process for that as well as the approval process. And finally, it's used to track the leave balances for each type of leave that an employee requests. Let's dive into the app now and actually see these in practice. Here you can see the request leave power app. I can log in as an employee or a manager just by clicking the different buttons. For a full walkthrough of all the functionality associated with this Power App and an end-to-end -end demo, I encourage you to watch my other video where I walk through it from end-to-end. -end. But to showcase just the Excel functionality, let's talk about those three things I talked about on the previous slide. First, we have the Company Holidays functionality right here. This is a list of the holidays that the company observes and their dates. This information comes from Excel. Here is the Excel file that this Power App is getting the information from. Here you can see the holiday names and start dates where this information in the Power App came from. Coming back to the Power App, we can see this gallery right here was bound to the data that came from that Excel file. The other places that we use the Excel file is for my leave balance. My leave balance here returns information for the different leave types and shows me how many days I have available to use up. This information comes from the balance worksheet inside of the Excel document. We can look up here and we can see there were 10 vacation days allocated and four were used. Doing the math, we can see 10 minus 4 is 6, so my available balance is 6 for my vacation leave type request, like we see right here. You can see that the others are 8, 8, 3, and 5, and if we come back, notice I have 8, 8, 3, and 5, but I don't have any days used for those categories. So this is actually how we're storing how many days you're allocated per category of leave, and how many that you have used. Now the next piece of the puzzle, returning to the Power App, is actually making a leave request. When I click the plus button up here, I can create a new request, just like this. This information is used to email the manager and put the information about this request into the Excel file. If I come back and look at one I've already created, you can see this one is marked as approved. If I click on it, I can see additional detail for four days, the type, as well as who the request was sent to. This information in the Power App comes from the Leave Worksheet right here. Here we can see the title of it, as well as the detail that we saw back in the Power App, as well as the start and end date, the type of leave, who requested it, who the approver was, as well as the status here. So all these different values that drive the Power Apps user interface and allow us to track this information are stored in the Excel sheet. And that's how Leave Request Power App Sample Template uses Excel as a data source. Now that we see how the app uses the data from Excel, how did we actually implement the connection there? I now have the same Power App open inside of the editor. Here I can click View and select Data Sources. Notice I have three data sources pointing to OneDrive for Business. 
They have the same exact names as the worksheets inside of the Excel file, leave, holidays, and balance. These are my data connections to the Excel file worksheets inside of the OneDrive where I have stored it. To create a new connection to do such a thing with your own Power App, you click Add to Data Source. Then you would click the OneDrive for Business connector, navigate to the particular Excel file you have, and select it. After you've done that, then you are able to select the data tables within that Excel file so that you can browse them. If I open the Excel file in the Microsoft Excel desktop client, I can then browse to the various worksheets that I have. For example, here I'm looking at the leave worksheet. Notice when I select in the data table, the table name leave appears up here. The same is true for holidays data table. As you can see when we look at that particular data table, as well as the balance data table you can see right here. These names correlate to the names of the data connections inside of the Excel sheet that you can add your connections to from a Power App. In order for your Power App to connect the data in Excel, you do have to put it into a data table so the Power App can connect to that data structure. After you have the data tables inside of Excel, then you can use them by referencing the name that you made for those connections. So the name of your data table becomes the same name as your data connection, also becomes the same name you use programmatically to connect to the data. Here we can see the My Requests gallery on the home page of the Power App. Notice our data sources leave. That is the collection of data that comes right out of that data table inside of Excel. If I go to a different page in the Power App, such as Company Holidays, and pop that one back into Edit Mode, we can see here, when I select the gallery, the items collection for this gallery will be bound to the holidays that we have set for the particular data connection to Excel right there. So that's how we're binding the data up from the different data tables into these galleries to display it. That's half of the piece of the puzzle. That's how we read the data. What about writing the data to the Excel sheet? Here I've queued up a new request inside of the Leave Request Power App Sample Template. And I'm at the point where I'm about to click Submit Request to put the data into the Excel sheet. I'm going to return to Edit Mode here and select the button at the bottom of the page and look at its On Select event here. This event actually runs the code to commit the data to the Excel sheet. The patch operation you see right here for the leave data connection is the one that's actually going to commit the new record. Here we can see the different columns inside of the Excel sheet where we're going to put the data that came from our Power App. After we patch it, we're going to refresh it. When we do that, it gets us a copy of the data after the new item is added to it. That way, the rest of the app has the collection updated with the new leave request we just submitted. So the patch operation is essentially how we're writing the data to the leave collection, which correlates to the connection inside of the Excel sheet to the leave data table. I encourage you to download this Power App and try it out on your own to learn more about the patch function, as well as look at the documentation on the Power App's documentation site that goes in depth about how you can use this particular function. Now that we understand how we can use Excel data inside of a Power App and both read and write from it, let's talk about where do we store the Excel file. Some important things to keep in mind. The Excel file must be accessible from your Power Apps, so you need to choose a location where the Power App can connect to it. It also must be shared with all users who access the Power App. If they don't have permissions to get to that file, then they will not be able to read and write from it. You need to be careful what you put into the file. 
Because the Excel file sits on a location outside of the Power App, any user who has permission to access that file via the Power App would be able to go to the location where that file is in and open it and see all the data inside of it. So the data that you put into it, you need to make sure that even though you're filtering it so users can only see their view of the data in your Power Apps, you need to make sure the data you put in there doesn't contain data that they shouldn't see. There are several business scenarios such as this leave request one that fall into that category and that's why Excel is a good data source here. Let's say you had a requirement though that somebody shouldn't see how many days of leave someone else has allocated in the company. In that case, perhaps Excel wouldn't be the best data source for this particular line of business app. You could put the data into something like the Common Data Service or a SQL Server where you could apply more security to it and ensure the data was only accessible um, via the Power App that way. The last thing you need to keep in mind is securing that Excel file appropriately. If only a subset of the users in your organization are going to use the Power App and therefore need access to the Excel file, you want to make sure that you secure that Excel file so that other people in the organization do not have access to it. So how do you deploy the Excel file? Well, if you're using these out-of-the-box, I like to call them Power App sample templates that you find on web.powerapps.com, Clicking the Make This App button when you first load the Power App into your subscription does it for you. However, if you're creating your own Power App and it's not one of the templates that you're getting out of the gallery, you must deploy the file for your own Power Apps on your own. That's just a manual process or you could put some CI CD into it to deploy that Excel file to the appropriate location and then secure it accordingly. As I mentioned, the Power App sample templates you find on web.powerapps.com automatically deploy the Excel file for you. So where do they put it? Well, if you select OneDrive, this is the file structure you will see where it is placed. It's under Files, Power Apps, Templates, and then the name of the Power App with the GUID afterward, and there is my Excel file that I was looking at before. The reason the Excel file was placed there is because when I installed this Power App sample template, I went to web.powerapps.com, I scrolled down and found the Leave Request Power App, and I clicked Make This App. This in turn loads the Power App into the Power Apps Editor. After the Power App is fully loaded into the editor, the editor will present me with a button at the top that allows me to make this app my own that button initiates the process to actually deploy the Excel file to my particular location where I'd like it to go. You can see this notification at the top where it says make your own version of this app by connecting the data storage such as OneDrive. When I click the make my own app button, I'm presented with a wizard. That wizard will then ask me where I would like to put it. It gives me several different choices like OneDrive, Dropbox, Google Drive, all kinds of different things like that, so I can select wherever it goes. But as I mentioned, when you pick OneDrive, it will put it into a directory named Power Apps, then Templates, then the directory for the name of your particular Power App here. Here's a quick example of how you can connect to your own Excel file inside of a Power App. Go to create.powerapps.com and select the New tab. Then, down at the bottom, click the blank app and pick a layout. This will open up the Power Apps Editor for that particular app. I'm going to connect to an Excel file that I have in Power Apps Templates Events. It's called events.xlsx. This has four different data tables in it on four different worksheets. I have announcements, events, sessions in the events, as well as speakers. To connect to that data, all I need to do is go up to View, select Data Sources, and click Add Data Source. Once I do that, I'm going to click New Connection 
and I'm going to go find OneDrive in this case because that's where I have the Excel file that I want to connect to. So here's OneDrive for Business and then I click Create. At this point, the OneDrive for Business connection is being added to my Power App. Once it's added, then I'll be able to browse to the file that I would like to add. Now I can dig down into that directory, go underneath Events, and open up my Events Workbook. Here you can see the four different data tables I have available. If I'd like to add data from all of them to my Power App, I select the tables and click Connect. At that point, I am now able to work with the data in those data tables directly in the Power App, just like you saw inside a leave request. Finally, I'd like to wrap up the video with really how can this concept be reused in other Power Apps? Well, one idea that comes right to the top of my head is collecting feedback from customers. Perhaps you could make a Power App that allowed customers to fill out a form to give you feedback about your product or service. You could easily pull that data into an Excel sheet and then work with it from there. You can also use this to populate Power Apps with dynamic data. Perhaps you have an Excel sheet where you like to put new information all the time or another process puts that information and you need it available in a different user interface. You could connect to such an Excel sheet from a Power App to have dynamic data appearing within the app. Another one is actually for managing content. If you'd like to have a Power App and it's displaying information that is vetted by a different process where people collaborate on it, you could have that data put inside of Excel and then display it inside of your Power App. I hope this video was helpful for you to ramp up to understand how to go about using Excel as a data source in Power Apps. Please check out my other videos about the Leave Request Power App as well, where I have other deep dives and NN walkthrough on the functionality, as well as the installation and configuration instructions. Thanks for watching the video. I'll see you next time.